morning everybody welcome welcome to my craft room and youtube channel monday morning again soon comes round so i thought i'd come and show you a simple idea with the fern stamp so with te3 so i thought we'd show you a nice simple idea so i've got some acetate i think it was some packaging because it's got dents and bumps and everything in it so if you've got a thicker piece of acetate that would probably be better but any acetate will be fine <coughs> excuse me first of all i want to decide what size circle so i think we'll go for the bottom one make sure that's got no bumps in i just cut these out with a die an old die that i've got you can draw around a lid a saucer anything that you have and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a sharpie pen because that will write on the acetate and then I'm just going to draw around the circle. And then we've got our circle. Let's just place that back. There we go. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect, but then if, like me, you've got like a, a wallet with all your masks and things in, you can keep it in there so that it hopefully doesn't get lost. And if you're anything like me, you'll spend all your time looking for it. But what you can do is stick a little bit of a coloured dot on there or a little bit of washi and you won't lose it. So let's just cut around the circle. And what this will give me is a mask then that I can use continually all the way through the year because this will last me quite a while with it being the acetate. And with writing on there in the Sharpie, that won't move. So I'm just sort of cutting out virtually on the line. And because I've used that Sharpie, you can then see the circle. Even though it's see-through, I can still see that because it's got the Sharpie on there. I'll keep that acetate so that we don't lose that because you could cut out different size circles to coordinate with whatever project and then you could easily put like your initials on there and then you won't lose that. So what I'm going to do then is I can add this now. I've got my own little mask now for my for my card making. Now, if you don't want to, that move or you don't want to hold it in place, I keep standing up for things. If you don't want to hold that in place, well then, no problem at all. I like to show you some simple ways you can get around things. Take your low tack tape or a piece of washi, make a circle with that, and then place that on the back and then you can add this and now it won't move there you go sorted always simple ways around that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to use some twisted citron distress oxide ink just pick that up and now it's not going to move so i can just add the twisted citron and now i've got my own little mask that I can add to my little wallet of masks and just go around in that circle like so and then I shall add a little bit of cracked pistachio doesn't matter if you want to use your inks or your oxides and just add a little bit of that cracked pistachio just to give it a little bit more interest of colour. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. And then finally, I'm going to use the salvaged patina. Just add some of that salvaged patina. Turn your card around, it makes it a little bit easier for you, especially if you've got any dexterity 
issues that will make it a lot easier for you. So I'm using, it does help if I tell you, doesn't it? I'm using a four inch by six inch piece of Pink Frog Smooth card to for my base. Now, today, up until midnight, any, any orders that I receive, I'll be sending a handmade card just to say thank you. I love doing things like that. So I've got my circle, as you can see, and now I can just peel that away. Take that off, as it's going to irritate you if you put that in with your um, masks. Ask me how I know. And then just give your mask a little bit of a wipe because you don't want the ink left on there. Now you've got this. And then I can add this to my little mask pile. Just place it in there and hopefully I'll never lose it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the fern stamp, TE3, and I'm going to use this little fern here. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I've just sort of turned it a little bit on the acrylic block. And then I'm going to use my VersaFine Claire inks, Verdant and Shady Lane. So let's use the Verdant first. And because it's a little stamp, just take a little bit of time to make sure that you've got the ink on there. And then I'm going to add the first generation and the second generation and the third generation. Again, let's stamp that. First generation, second generation, third generation. You can't really see the third generation, but even if you have some of the image it works works quite well so first generation second generation third generation you can actually see that you can actually see it so then take the first generation second generation and third generation and again So, and you can turn it round different angles. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my Shady Lane, which is darker in colour. And it goes to show how versatile stamps really are. First generation, second generation, third generation. First generation, second generation. I like my leaves going all different ways because that's how it is in nature. Third generation. So again, take the first generation and second and third. And all you're using is one, one little, one little stamp just to bring some interest to your design. So let's do it that way. It's like how I, I turned it to 360 degrees. There we go. First, second, third. And by giving the third generation, you're sort of giving your design depth. There we go. And I'm just going to take my Morning Mist Versafine Claire. I love this because it gives that sort of um, shadow effect. I'm going to add some of the Morning Mist. I've got Morning Mist in the shop on my website, which I will add to the description box. Oh, 
let's just add so again first and second generation and I love the grey because it just gives that sort of shadow feel and it doesn't matter if you over stamp as well perfect so we've then got our little circular piece just lovely and you can keep adding you know if you think oh no i want a little bit more on this side you can you can just keep adding and it's knowing when to stop which is the hardest bit there we go lovely so then what i can do is i can take where's this right in front of me tracy i can then take the fern text take that fern text just grab a scrap of card scrap of card ink the fern with the morning mist and then stamp the second generation so just take the second generation and use it like a background stamp and that's why I like the morning mist that's why I got it in the shop, really, in my website, because it's the one I use the most. Just take that fan again. And just because it's a text stamp doesn't mean we can't use it as a background. Just create our own little background and it doesn't matter if some of your words are missing because you're just creating a little bit of a background there you go so ink stamp off or blot and then stamp your second generation ink, blot it, stamp your second generation. I quite like that as it is. Let's place that back. Now I want to make this a little bit more sort of opulent. Right. She says, without kicking everything all over the place. So I'm going to take a quickie, quick, quickie, quickie, <laughs> quickie, quickie glue pen. Hmm. And I'm going to add a few gold leaf so what I'm going to do is just sort of add the quickie glue pen just here and there with a few dots on the ferns just to give a few little opulent touches of the gold leaf and because I'm using such a tiny amount of the quickie glue pen it dries quite quickly and if you don't want to do the lines you can just do dots of the quickie glue pen don't think about where you're going just just go for it now because you've used such a tiny amount of the quickie glue pen you don't need thick lumps of your gold leaf
so we'll just take some copier paper just because the copier paper can catch the excess gold leaf if you haven't got a quickie glue pen i know that i think i've got it the finny bar has got some gold leaf adhesive as well so just sort of place some little pieces just that should really be enough because we've only in fact, that's enough for about 20 cards but there you go let's place all that back in the pot and just rub this over over your card just so it catches that let's see if we can put that back in the pot Almost of it back in the pot. Put the lid on, or else, as you can see, you end up with it everywhere. And just rub that over with your finger. You can use a scoochie or whatever. I just use my finger and then I'll rub off with a piece of kitchen roll. The only thing is I can never pick my card up and you do end up with the gold leaf everywhere, including on your finger. So just give that a bit of a wipe. And then what I'm going to do is just take a little piece of kitchen roll. And then just polish that. There we go move that out of the way and we'll just scoop up these little bits that blow everywhere just so that we don't end up blowing them onto our project there we go so nice simple idea for you just so that you can see at the moment. And can you see the touches of gold really adds to it. And then if we take our little bird and add our little bird. We can take the little bird black ink I nearly stamped with the grey then take that black ink now the idea is with this you can take it as far as you want so I will add a little bird here so if you wanted to add a floral to it you could add a floral you can make it as much or as little as you wish that's the idea when you've got sort of simple ideas you can take it as far as you wish so then I've got my little bird in there and he sits just beautifully in there so let's see and the little bird is from TE4. And then each day is a treasure with brave wings she flies. So let's use that one. And just add this over the top because this is the black ink so this will force the grey ink into the back background just so you can see that with brave wings she flies if you want to cut it out you can cut it out and do it that way no problem at all I told you the gold leaf goes everywhere didn't I then I'm just going to grab my ink tense pencil may actually may not need to shade this so we'll just i might not need to shade the beard so let's add a little bit of 
shading under the sentiment. You'll see why in a second we may not need to do it with the beard. And then we'll just add a little bit of shading just underneath our sentiment. There we go. I'm then going to take, so you can leave it like that if you wish. And then I'm going to take this fern, because I just want that one there. Ink that with my black ink. So it comes into the foreground. And what I'm trying to show you is you can stop at this stage if you wish. Now that could quite easily, you could put a little bow on there and you could quite easily make that into a Christmas card as well. But I don't want this as a Christmas card, I just want it as a card. So I'm just going to cut my little fern out. Again, you don't have to do this, you can leave it where it is now. No problem at all. For me, it just takes a few moments just to cut the fern out, going sort of in and out. I like to go in and out because it sort of it gives it a more fern like feel. If this card's getting in your way, just cut that out. And if you leave a little white gap, that makes it a little bit easier for you. And as you get towards the top, you just sort of go in and out. There we go. And that's what creating is all about. You can take it as far or keep it as minimal as you like. That's what I love about creating. There we go. That's it. So I've got my little fan now. And then I can place my fan just here. Let's make it so we can just see. That's it. Oh, I've forgotten the adhesive. Now, I don't have to add pin flare glue because you can make this have a little bit of dimension even with just adhesive. Because just put adhesive in the middle. Drop it like I've just done. There we go. That's it. So just place this down and leave the sort of ends and then it looks like it's automatically has dimension. And then I'm going to take this little bit of text, this little bit of card, let's put the fern leaf back. And when you're pulling your stamps off, just sort of peel them away, don't stretch them. Let's take that fern weird, take that with the black ink, just to add that fern text. Now it's in the black ink, so it'll come into the foreground. Where's my big scissors? It's because the other side of my desk is where I'm doing all my packing, so I keep moving my scissors from one side of the room to the other. Let's make this, I only want a little word. There we go. I'm just going to add the little, little fern word just there. I often use my camera 
and when you look through the camera you see things totally different. So I've got a little bit of dimension but not too much and still keeping the card quite simple. So let's add some of our white splatters. You don't want to hit your text because you obviously want to be able to read what your text says. So just make sure that you don't get the splatters on your text. And then we can add this to our four and a quarter by six and a quarter mat and layer. So let's add that to the mat and layer. This is why you can use your stamps all year round and why they're so versatile. Just add there we go. And then I'm going to add this to a five by seven inch card blank, and it always looks so much more professional when you add your matting and layering. Add that to a five by seven inch card blank, like so. And then in less than 30 minutes, you've got a lovely, simple idea using your stamps just so you can see that and it doesn't have to be complicated you can keep it nice and simple so i hope you've enjoyed that and i can't wait to see your interpretation happy monday and just remember anybody that places an order i'll send a handmade card up until midnight tonight so love to all have a lovely week and i'll see you all soon bye for now